Brought to you by StationHouseCoffee.com and InspiredDisorder.com slash music. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. The Devil All the Time. New movie out on Netflix, directed and written by Antonio Campos. A uh, director that I've only seen, I had only seen one of his movies uh, before seeing this one. And uh, the only reason I watched this was because uh, one of my favorite podcasts, the Slash Filmcast, is going to review it. Uh, so I figured if it's good enough for them to review, it must be a good movie. Has a great cast. Uh, Robert Pattinson's in it. Tom Holland is one of the leads. Uh, Bill Sarsgaard. Um, just a lot of great, great acting in general. <clears throat> really gay, really great writing as well. Very like the movie itself, probably one of the best examples of storytelling in a movie. Uh, just the way it sets up all the different characters, how all the characters storylines are intertwined with each other. Even the voiceover uh, really helps with this movie because there's a lot going on. It's set in like the 50s and 60s in the Midwest, uh, two towns between Ohio and I think Kentucky. And it really is a movie, just a painful story, a painful story. Uh, just it beats you down. But it's so well told that even though, you know, something horrible is right around the corner. Because, I, mean I mean, the title itself, Devil All the Time, is kind of a... Kind of a clue to uh, what you're in for when you go to watch this movie. Because it seems like one bad thing happens after another. And I'm not talking like, you know, <clears throat> mildly disappointing bad things. It's just like horrific things happen one after the other. And the horrific things are there to set up these characters uh, and how everything plays off each other. Just amazing. It reminded me a lot of Fargo. Um, also Magnolia, kind of having these big casts with a lot of characters and all their stories are intertwined. Um, very good. I actually went on a, a binge of uh, Antonio Campos' movies, at least two of the uh, earlier films that he's done, After School and Simon Killer, after watching this. And uh, this is definitely, I would say, his, his penultimate, his masterpiece um, I have no idea how this movie was received, but it, for, as far as I'm concerned, probably my favorite movie of the year so far. Probably one of my favorite movies that's ever been made. Just the level of acting, the level of writing, the level of storytelling. Um, it was all it was all there on screen. It was all there on screen. Nothing that is set up isn't paid off. Um, everything shown is is meant to. Uh, be seen and then to later give you the information later on when th crazy things happen because crazy things do happen um, and it's not like supernatural crazy it's just like the depths of humanity and uh, how not only how evil humans can be the potential for evil that humans have but also <clears throat> um, but also uh the uh, just ha what you could get away with in in the, that time in those areas uh, because they're all like rural areas they're not big cities uh, even now they're not big cities these areas um, and then especially back then I mean there's no they had phones but you know and the cops had radios but there was no you could get you could literally get away with murder uh, if you just left after doing it. <laughs> Like it, it would, it's not that hard. It wasn't that hard back then to get away with murder and not just regular murder. You get away with like crazy fucking murder. Um, but yeah, just tons of interesting, extremely damaged people. Uh, and you see like when it sets up the, the characters, um, you're kind of, you, you start way back where you like Tom Holland is the, the, the main uh, lead in this but it takes a while for him to show up because it's showing like the history of his dad um, not the history but it shows like some traumatic things that happened to his dad uh, during war 
Um, and then after war, then things happen with his mom, then things happen with his dog, then things happen with his dad, and then he ends up at this place. Um, and then there's another person that ends up at that same place, and then they show the backstory of how that person got there. Just so well told. Um, really, it, it hurt to watch this movie. It really felt bad in my soul to watch this movie, but uh, in the end, it was just so good. The end of the movie, it, it doesn't leave you disappointed. Let's put it that way. Like, the end of the movie, kind it wraps up everything it just it it's it's almost the best kind of conclusion you can have uh for a movie that's so dark and disturbing um but yeah just amazing amazing uh acting in this too uh and if you look at like the previous films of Antonio Campos uh very minimal very like um like single shots you know, single focus, like people are either out of focus or walk into focus in certain shots, just very minimal all, all around, very much like uh, kind of a stereotypical like indie drama in a lot of ways. Um, but the, he has also like a source of like mystery to his things because you like don't necessarily always know um, because he's you're you're introduced to new facts throughout the movie. So it's uh it's the, it's after seeing this movie and just being blown away, uh, just being torn up emotionally, but also blown away at just how how amazing the storytelling is. Uh, going back to kind of see where he started and see the movies that he did before this uh, was kind of a, a good a good kind of uh, I don't know what you'd say like kind of a extra kind of it really filled you into the type of stories and the type of way Antonio Campos likes to tell his stories um it it seems like i mean the the problem with being minimal in your storytelling not that this movie is minimal this one there's a lot going on this one's almost like five of his movies all wrapped into one uh because a lot of the other movies are basically just following a single character um where this one you're seeing the story told through not told through different characters but you you drift around and you follow different characters and you see what they get into and it's just, just such a good movie the devil all the time um i mean and the the movie is basically surviving life surrounded by evil right you're just fighting the devil all the time that's actually where that's a line in the movie uh fighting the devil all the time is is uh something that tom holland's dad says um and he had a tough life you know just not n before even the events of this movie like just being in war there's one scene uh while he was in war uh where he came across him and like a few of his uh i don't know what they're called army mates uh come across this like open area that's just been destroyed uh like burnt down like napalm to shit and just everything horrible and uh one of his fellow soldiers uh was burnt on a cross uh crucified and was just charred charred up uh, but when he got close um the corpse on the cross took a big gasp um and it's just a, a haunting scene haunting scene and uh he doesn't like he does he shows you just enough to know what's happening it's not like gratuitous in any way um again i think it comes from his minimal minimalist style from these previous films where it's like when you have when you when you strip everything away and you tell a story using the least amount of words um and showing scenes in the most simple way like very few cuts, a lot of long scenes um, where he allows his actors to kind of act within the scene and uh, have long dialogues, um, and not even long dialogues, just allow for a lot of silence. Just really more uh, just natural, realistic kind of uh, ways of speaking, um, which I really enjoyed. Uh, really good movie. Uh, highly recommend it. Probably my favorite movie of the year. 
Uh, it's my the best movie of the year. It's it's not like a movie where it makes you feel good to watch it. Um, although I did put it on a second time, just kind of on in the background. Um, cause it, it is one of those movies where even if it's on in the background, you can look up and there's just an, an amazing scene you're going to watch. Um, I don't know. Just, it's so good. It's, it's hurts. It's painful. You may cry. Uh, it didn't, it didn't necessarily get me emotional, but it definitely made me stressed out. Gave me a lot of anxiety and a lot of like, it, it really actually made me feel good <laughs> for like uh, the life that I'm going through, uh, where the the trials and tribulations of my day to day are nowhere near uh, comparable to to what happens in this movie. So I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Check it out on Netflix right now. Make sure you support our sponsors by going to stationhousecoffee.com and following Station House Coffee on Instagram for all of your small batch, single origin, premium coffee brewed in Vermont and shipped directly to you. Buy now. Support the sponsors that support this show. Go to stationhousecoffee.com and follow Station House Coffee on Instagram. Get 30 days free of Amazon Music Unlimited by going through my link inspireddisorder.com slash music. That's 60 million songs streamed to all your devices. Cancel anytime. Sign up now for Amazon Music Unlimited for 30 days all for free. Inspireddisorder.com slash music. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!